For maximum entertainment, enter full screen mode now. Enjoy the show. This is Watch Me Anime. Select your character. Jago selected. Select your mode. Welcome everyone to Watch Me Animate episode number 15. My name is Jonathan Abenheim and today we begin a very special three-part series on animating a cinematic run in Maya. Yes, I said Maya. Now, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this for a long time, so I appreciate your patience. This series is split into three parts. Part one, I'll be creating a vanilla run cycle. That is what you're currently watching me do as I build this run using two key poses. There are other methods to do this, but I'm just using two key poses. The first key pose is the contact which has one foot on the ground one foot in the air and the second key pose is the air pose which has both feet airborne part two will focus on creating the performance for our cinematic sequence using a lot of secondary animation to transform our vanilla run into a very unique stylized run and finally, part three, we're gonna wrap things up by polishing the stylized run from part two to create the final sequence for your viewing pleasure. So, as many of you already know, if you've been following me for a while, my preferred method for animation is using a combination of the layered slash straight ahead approach. I like to establish good wait timing early on in my animation and build off of that. So, that said, two poses timed on 16 frames with an additional up and down on the comm gives me a good starting point to start building the run cycle. All right, so we got ourselves a basic two pose run cycle on 16 frames with a tiny bit of up and down translation, which I'm gonna continue to tweak. And in addition to that, I'll also add in some front and back rotations. Now, as you watch me make adjustments to the calm, I'm looking to strike a good balance between the movement and the size of my character. And by that, I mean, I want the movement to feel natural to my character's body weight and size. You see, you can't have too much up and down or too much rotation or that will throw off the entire animation and in the other extreme not having enough up and down or rotation will also throw off the entire animation that is why you see me make such small adjustments while continuously playing through the animation in real time to make sure that the run looks and feels good with my model and on a side note developing your visual sense does take time and practice Moving down to the feet, we want to do a little house cleaning to make sure that the contacts feel good. Now, when I'm animating feet, I almost never use foot controllers located at the uh, front and back of the foot. Instead, I simply use a combination of the foot controller itself and the toe controller. The foot controller, that's the rectangle around the foot and the uh, circle in the middle of the foot that controls the toe. That's what I use almost 99% of the time. Now, you'll notice that the path for the foot is not arcing towards the passing position and that's not super important as I'm not concerned with the path of the arc but rather focus on the visual mass of the legs as they stride through the run. We'll take care of the path later on. Time to give our hips a little love and I'm not talking about love handles here I'm talking about rotation to loosen up the lower body and the legs so mechanically speaking as your legs move in a run your hips are also in constant movement these are very small adjustments as I animate using the straight ahead layered method remember layered is the key word here I'm layering in small details in a specific sequence to get the results I want this method does require a lot of practice patience and more importantly trust you got to trust the method and respect the logic and you will get the results you want. On top of that, animation using the straight ahead slash layered method gives you the most organic performances for your animations. <laughs> 
Onto the spine we go, I'm exploring different types of rotations to see what gives me the best visual results. Now, I strongly encourage you all to spend a little time testing different variations in your F-curve editor to see what you get. Uh, there are no mistakes that can't be fixed by a simple undo. Now, although this movement is very subtle at the moment, it's important to not overlook it and spend the right amount of time in the F-curve editor to get it looking and feeling right. It's also important to note that it does not matter what your F-curve looks like in the graph editor, it's when you press play that matters. This is a big one. A lot of people take this for granted. Now, another thing you'll notice is that I also do uh, quite often is make adjustments to my F curves as my animation is playing back in real time. This is a huge time saver, by the way. Now it is time to pose my character, and by posing, I mean create a more appealing pose, which will lend itself better to the final camera angle for this cinematic shot. Since I'm pretty satisfied with the basic animation on the calm legs and the spine, I feel like now would be a good time to improve the overall posing. Now, in my imagination, I know the run will be more of a side profile-ish, if that's a word, which is why you see me favoring his left side as I continue to adjust the overall pose by moving the entire F-curve in the graph editor. I simply select the axis that I want to adjust, I grab all the keys and I move them up and down for the desired look. Uh, I will make some minor F-curve adjustments for the feet rotations and for the arms I'll simply key in some new poses since there weren't any animation keys before. So we got our basic pose in to help us define the general look and feel of Jago's motion as he runs forward. I'll continue layering in more detail to help improve the animation starting with a small adjustment to the hips, spine and legs. Now, the reason I haven't yet touched the arms and the head has to do with the hierarchy. Both arms and head are children of the spine, and as a general rule, if the spine isn't moving well, the arms and head will not look good either. Therefore, it's important for me to first get my spine as dialed in as possible, even though I can easily change the world space on both arms and head uh, to be independent of the spine movement. I still prefer cleaning up the spine along with the hips, Personally speaking, it's a cleaner way of working. Down to the legs we go, a little house cleaning as I tighten up the arcs and general contact positions to make sure that we feel the ground as he runs. Now keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be an improvement over the previous version. Now I'm going to be adding in my first camera and keep in mind that I'm pretty sure that this camera isn't going to be final, like 99% sure it's not going to be final, but I still place it nonetheless. And the reason why I place it is because it's a starting point, it's the first version, it serves also as a reminder to myself that I need to make it look better every time I look through the camera. Uh, I just know I gotta improve it. So it's a reminder for myself. But that said, um, I know I wanted to favor his left side and this camera does check that box. <laughs> Continuing with the body pass, this time I'll focus in on the upper body, shoulders and arms to be specific. Now, although the camera isn't final, Jago's run favoring the left side is final in my mind. So I'm going to continue the animation knowing very well that the camera will change, but the character's run and overall body direction will stay this way. Now, I want to avoid the typical forward facing run, which will feel very symmetric versus him favoring his left side, which creates more asymmetry and in turn creates more appeal. Animation on the arms is very basic at the moment, but as you will see in the next step, we'll take everything up a notch. All right, so in the top left viewport, you can see the view from the second camera that I've added into the scene, which I'm quite pleased with because number one, it's showing the entire body. Number two, it's giving you, the viewer, a more dynamic look at the run. And number three, this camera just gives the shot that much more appeal. So now that I have an interesting camera to work with, I'll continue layering in more animation detail into the overall mechanics of the run. At the moment, I'm addressing the arms via the F-curve editor and one of the ways I like to animate the arms is to key in two poses at both extremes and then duplicate the curve multiple times and in real time, adjust the position of the curve until the timing of the arms feels right.
So just when I thought I had a cool looking camera angle of the full body run in action, I made yet another adjustment to favor uh, Jago's left side of the run, still full body, but pull over to the left. And that's when I knew that the camera was locked and final. It's a feeling, when you see it, you just know. So I was definitely feeling this new camera profile and I knew that I was not gonna touch it from this point on and that this would be the final cam. Now that I have a final camera that I know will not change, I'm gonna make some final tweaks to get this run cycle ready for secondary animation. That's gonna be the focus in our second part of this series and is really where the magic happens. Now, in order to create this unique cinematic performance, we need a really long run cycle to work from. So I'm gonna select the full character and duplicate this run a bunch of times, make a quick few adjustments on the F curves and this cycle is ready for secondary animation. Remember, it does not have to be a perfect uh, run cycle because we're going to completely transform it and bring it to life using secondary animation in our second part of this series. So that said, it is time for a WMA recap. <laughs> All right, so I started off this animation with two key poses, the contact and the air pose. And as a bonus, I added in a little up and down translation on the comp. Keep in mind, there are other ways to animate a run, but this was the method I chose for this particular animation. Next up, I tightened up the up and down translation and added in a bit of front and back rotation on the comp. I then went back down to the feet. I did a little cleanup pass to improve the contacts and the passing position. Following that, I introduced a bit of hip rotation and then I moved up to the spine, added in some spine rotation as well. At this point, it was time to repose Jago, so I favored his left side to keep things asymmetrical and more interesting. Next was a general body pass to continue improving the quality of the run with very small adjustments. I then placed the first camera into the scene to test out some interesting angles. Another general body pass and some basic shoulder and arm animations were added. Then a new camera was added, showing off a different look to the run. I also made some adjustments to the overall run and improved the arm animations as well. I made some adjustments to the camera, which I knew would be locked and final. And then I selected the entire character and made a bunch of copies in my timeline, or I should say on my timeline. And that, my friends, concludes part one. And this is how you create a vanilla run cycle. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in part two, where we take this vanilla run cycle and transform it into a cinematic performance using secondary animation. So to celebrate this first Maya episode in Watch Me Animate history, I'm making the full process video available to download for free for a limited time. That is 68 video files totaling 13 plus hours of raw, unedited animation process from start right to end. And I'm also very excited to announce that for the first time ever on this channel, a second first, I'm also making the original project file for this episode available to you as well. Now you can open up the final animation scene on your PC to explore and play with. So to get access to all this good stuff and more, head on over to my Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash watchmeanimate. All the links will be available in the description below. Lastly, I want to give a very special thanks to all my patrons for supporting Watch Me Animate. If you find my videos to be educational and helping you improve as an animator and you would like to show your support for my work, head on over to patreon.com slash watchmeanimate to make a small monthly pledge. Thanks again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next episode as we continue on with part two on how to animate a cinematic run in Maya.